What's going on everybody, welcome back. And I know everybody's probably really tired of seeing my favorite and my best of or what was new at SHOT Show this year. But I wanted to put out just a couple things that I thought were actually really, really cool. I know there's a ton of good content out there. You guys haven't watched some of the Gun Collective stuff. Um, they got some really good information out there and some really cool new products. The Lago Alien, the Maxim Defense stuff. And I'm gonna kind of talk about a couple of those too. Really quick though, I wanted to thank every single one of you out there. Uh, the channel, it may already be past 10,000 by the time I post this. Um, if not, I really appreciate all the subscribers, all the comments, and the information that I've gotten from some viewers. I've had a couple of viewers contact me over the past year and a half-ish that I've been doing this that have provided some great information. Some of them have provided some parts, and some of them are actually uh, very, very in the know at certain things and have provided information that I was able to verify and share with you guys. So I love each and every one of you. I really appreciate that. And I'm really gonna do my best to continue providing good content that you guys are interested in. Now, without any further wait or wasting of your time, let's really get into a couple things that I thought were awesome at SHOT Show. Uh, the number one I've already released a little bit of a video on was the Apex Tactical stuff. Now, Apex Tactical makes some great stuff. Um, I've tested a bunch of their triggers in the, in the Glocks, in the uh, M&P, in the FN509. I'll have that video coming real soon with their flatty and that. They produce an amazing product. They do a lot of testing but they have started to produce more and more stuff and they're getting into things that I think a lot of people are gonna be very interested in, especially some competition style people that may also carry something like the FN509 platform. So if you didn't see that video, they are coming out with a full slide. I mean a full swap to this complete slide. You can leave your optic on if you're an optic shooter at competition and you just go from slide to slide. Um, it is the longer version. Uh, it'll come with a custom barrel or a threaded barrel. That option is up to you. This thing looks absolutely awesome, um, and I would expect nothing less from Apex. Now, for my Smith & Wesson fans out there, they're coming out with a complete four-inch slide for the shield. Now, I know Smith & Wesson did release uh, one of theirs, the Core Series for a four-inch, but that uh, compact long slide thing, I've been getting a lot of requests for that. This is now the option. For those that want a little bit longer of a slide, maybe a little bit more of a sight radius, although sight radius on pistols, you know, you really got to think about distance and target and all that may not be as big of a deal as some people make it out to be. But regardless, they are making a great slide that's cut for the RMSC, which is the best size optic for that. Not that it's the best optic, but it's the best size optic for that platform. Again, full slide, got that Apex name and that Apex quality and testing. Those will be out in the next couple of months. Now, everyone has talked about this and this gun was so hyped up, maybe overhyped in some people's minds, the Lago Alien. Now, I had seen videos of this several months ago. Um, I got to go shoot it at the range day there. I don't have footage of me shooting it for you guys, but what I can tell you is this has, I was shocked. I literally didn't almost know how to accept the recoil impulse of, a, of that setup when I was shooting it the first couple times because it felt so different. I'm used to that muzzle flip, that muzzle rise, and there was still that there, but it was completely different because of how they designed that and the fact that that barrel is basically in line with your finger as you're holding that and pressing that, uh, that gun out. That thing was amazing. So much of a steel CZ feel to it with that just crazy design and the nose of it that almost looks like the Alien, which is probably why they called it the Lago Alien. But let's talk price point on that. The first 500 that are getting imported, this special package with two slides and an optic already and a holster, comes with everything you need to step onto the competition field with it. $5,000. That's a big investment for probably 98% of us. But are you getting what you pay for? Is something you want? It's a limited edition. Will it continue to grow in value? Uh, they are going to come out with a, my understanding is a more kind of, uh, you know, budget friendly, still probably going to be in that three to $4,000 range. I'm assuming something like that. That would just be an assumption, but it's going to be far cheaper. Probably in that STI price range. And those things are awesome. Um, if they come out with something that's kind of in my price range, I'm not gonna lie. I may very well take a look at it because it is unique. It's fun. It's cool. And that is just a range pleaser. You can go out there with your friends and, and everybody and let them uh, rip a mag out of there. And it's just, it's a different experience and it is pretty dang cool. Now, something that I, I've seen before but haven't had a chance to play around with was Seekins Precision. And I'm telling you right now, I'm gonna do whatever I can to get a hold of their DMR rifle because the fit, the finish, and the feel of that thing was like few others. Uh, I had some good time talking to them, talking about their in-house production, what they outsource, what they insource, 
and they are doing things right over there, and the look of them was good. A little bit Gucci for some people. I was really drawn to that gray DMR. They're doing really awesome things over there, and I can't wait, even though I am not a precision guy, um, I can't wait to see what I can push my level of shooting to with that setup. So I'll definitely be trying to get a hold of them, trying to get something out for testing. I will purchase it if I have to to get that video done because I am that interested in testing it out because of what I saw and the information I got there from them about how they're trying to control every single aspect of their weapon system down to the pins, the bolts, and all that stuff and what they can actually completely machine in-house. Now that says a lot because machining everything and making everything in-house, there's obviously things you're going to have to outsource, springs and pins and things like that. But when you can have the most minimal amount of stuff being coming out from the outside of your production shop, you're gonna have a higher quality product and that is extremely expensive when you're really, really making high-end stuff like Seekins is. So look for that very soon. Palmetto State and the Sorta Glock. I'm gonna call it a Sorta Glock because I looked at this thing, I broke it apart and I had actually seen pictures, turned out to be this, got them from somebody in the industry and was like, hey, take a look at this, what do you think? And I'm like, it's a Glock. And they said, no, it's not. And I said, yeah, that's a Glock. It's either a Glock or somebody's gonna get sued. So when I went and I took a look at this thing, I couldn't believe it. I look at the guy, the Palmetto State guy, and I'm like, are the, I was like, is that a Glock factory minus connector? And he kind of looked at me like I was crazy. He says, no, it's ours. I'm like, like how, how are you doing this? I had no idea, just hadn't thought. The Gen 3 uh, patent expired, uh, so they're open to clone at this point. I, I didn't know that, and I was thinking, you guys just wrote like a millions and millions and millions of dollar check to, to Gaston at this point. And I had no, I just didn't know and didn't think about the, uh, the patent expiring, which is pretty cool. So I got to play with that. I didn't shoot it at range day. I'm not gonna lie, it feels kind of good. The, the frame feels kind of good. When I looked at the slides and the machinings and the back plate, I've got some questions. So I would really like to get a hold of one of those and play with it as well. But they're coming in at a ridiculously low price. I was like in the $300 range um, for a Glock clone. And then they brought that h &K, uh, MP5 clone out too. So Palmetto State is doing some pretty crazy stuff out there. They're just killing it. It's like they're not stopping. They're continuing to move forward and they're just, they're, they're flooding the market. I mean, they are just pushing so much product that it's pretty cool to see. They're doing it at a pretty good price. I know some people have said they've had issues with their quality over the years. Um, I, I have a Palmetto uh, AR9 that I got videos working on and I know some guys that have owned some Palmetto ARs that have used them for a very long time and had zero issues. So I gotta say, it's pretty much a decent quality setup, what I know from their existing product, and we will see going forward how that pistol, the Sorta Glock, and that uh, MP5 clone do, but really excited to see those hit the market and see what people start thinking of those as well. And then Canik. Now, you've seen my video on the Canik, maybe you haven't, if not, it's, it's down there. The Canik setups kind of shocked me a little bit. I wasn't expecting what I got when I fired those, and I was pleasantly surprised for the cost of like the TP9 SFX and all that stuff. And they've released that Salient Arms version now, which is, I've got to play with it a couple times now. That thing is pretty awesome. Uh, pretty dang cool setup for sure. And I know that's not necessarily new for this year, but it's definitely something that at SHOT Show, when I got to see some of the stuff they're gonna be coming out with and doing, pretty awesome. And Canik, I think, is one of those companies, it's imported by Century Arms. I think it's definitely something to pay attention to in the market because they seem to be picking up steam. They had some issues at first. They've corrected some of that. And I'm really interested to see where they go because it's a pretty nice setup for what you're spending on it. And the Nomad Defense people. So a lot of people since I've done that video have been asking me about the Nomad Magwell. So I finally got it. They were nice enough to throw me one at shot. I will be testing this thing out. And they have a large full frame coming out. So they're gonna have the 17 size Glock frame in the Gen 4 coming out very soon, which I'm definitely excited about because I absolutely enjoy shooting the frame that the guys over at Nomad came up with. It is a great setup. It's a little bit more ergonomically correct as compared to grip angle than factory style Glocks. It is a serialized piece. Some people are okay with that. Some people want an 80%. All I can tell you is I'm definitely excited to test out their Magwell on it. And I'm definitely excited to get my hands on that full frame when it comes out, which my understanding is is not gonna be too much longer. So stand by for that as well. The other thing that I fell into has nothing to do with the gun industry was the whiskey that I found, the Smoke Wagon Whiskey. Whiskey. It's not whiskey, and I keep, oh God, I'm sorry, I did it on camera, but I'm gonna leave it on there. I kept calling it whiskey, and it's all bourbons are whiskey, but all whiskeys aren't bourbon. Ah, crap, it's bourbon. Anyways, that stuff was absolutely awesome. I got to uh, photobomb Garantham and John from Gun Collective and some other people while I was uh, hanging out, and I got to test, uh, test this whiskey or bourbon out, 
And actually, I, I begged the dude basically for a bottle and gave him some cash, some, some large bills for it, brought it home with me. And I'm going to tell you what, that stuff was good. It kind of changed my mind on bourbon. I've always been a Scotch guy or a Jameson guy, kind of simple sometimes. Great stuff. Totally not related to SHOT Show, I guess, per se, but it was an awesome product that I found out there. And it's local in a whole bunch of places. You can look it up and check it out. Definitely worth a taste if you're into that bourbon. Now, Swamp Fox. That's an optics kind of in the more budget range has come out. I've been testing the uh, Swamp Fox little Kingslayer optic, and it's already changed. So they've already kind of redesigned that. They're going to have a top-loading battery no more longer, the side uh, side port. But Holosone actually has gone to the side port, and that's an interesting change to see companies kind of go back and forth there from bottom or side to top to back to side or whatever. So definitely cool. Uh, still got some testing on going with that. The video on that will be out soon. It will be out in the next hopefully couple of weeks. I've had a decent experience with it. Uh, there is some issues with the glass. I think a little bit of more magnification, a little bit more colorization than some others. But for a budget, uh, budget optic, kind of maybe light competition, um, you know, that home use, maybe some EDC use. Not a duty rated optic, not a military rated optic. So we got to really differentiate the two. Um, decent setup for the cost. So I'll definitely uh, get some of the newer stuff they have coming out and check those out as well for my budget-minded optic people out there. Now, continuing on into the optics, we have that Holosun. Now, Holosun has already changed the design of the 507C. They're going to a side-mounted battery. I'm gonna tell you right now, I trust the Holosun stuff. I've been testing the 507C for some time now. Now, I've taken longer than some other people because I am actually trying to get that implemented as a carry optic where I work because they're approving, I think the SIG is approved, or excuse me, no, the SIG is not approved. The loophole delta point is approved, the RMR is approved, and the Vortex Venom is approved. In my opinion, I, I really trust the Hollow Sun 507C over the Venom. I've seen, uh, my personal experience, it's a little bit more durable, and I've seen less of the Hollow Suns fail at this point as compared to some of the Vortex stuff. But Vortex has an amazing warranty, and they're a great company. I really do love some of their stuff, too. I've got a bunch of them. It's just, I, I really trust the Hollow Sun in that 507C. I haven't tested all of their stuff, so I can't say brand as a whole, but bang for the buck, what you're getting, clarity of the glass, um, how, how uh, crisp that reticle is in there, or the dot, depending on what you want, whether you want that big dot, circle, setup, or just the dot, and the features it has, and especially now they're doing top-loading batteries, so you don't have to, re or side-loading battery on the new Hollow Sun, so you don't have to change out uh, or re-zero or anything. That is pretty dang awesome. Um, so I think Holosun's got a lot of good things coming. I'm really going to keep my eye on them as a company. And I'm really interested to test out more of their product. Now, continuing into Holosun, they came out with their closed emitter competition towards the Aimpoint Acro. And now we all know the Aimpoint stuff is, it's up here. So they came out with their, uh, their ML5B or is it the B, something like that. And that is the one that has uh, adjustment turrets that will cover different uh, calibers, which is absolutely awesome, and it carries that aim point name and durability. Got a picture of me hanging out with the Carl G1, and then a picture of that uh, that uh, that ML5B, which is great optic. We all know aim point makes amazing stuff. It's you know proven and proven and proven at this point. Same thing with the ACOGs and all that. But Holosun came out their closed emitter optic for pistols or whatever. You know, it looks like the bus that you parked on top of your pistol slide. And I gotta say, I think Aaron Cowan's already done a kind of a beat up test on it. And we, if you haven't seen Aaron Cowan's videos, you need to watch how that guy tests optics. I wish I had the budget, time and money to do what he does with them. Cause one, it'd be fun. And two, it just shows the brutal beating that some of these optics can take. And Holosun, Holosun is one of those optics. I haven't personally got to test that version of it, but I am extremely interested in testing it. I mean, though it's maybe not something I would carry, uh, but it, it's pretty dang awesome, especially at the price point compared to like the Aimpoint Acro. So those are just some of the top things that I liked and I thought you guys would be interested in to keep an eye out for. I really, uh, again, wanted to thank all of you guys out there for being viewers and subscribing and commenting and all that. I really appreciate it, even when you disagree with me because not one source is generally right about everything, least of all me. I'm not above being wrong and I'm not above having bad information. So if there's anything that I get wrong, bust me out in that comment section and we'll move on from there. But I always do try to get you the best information out there. And I try to bring you the things that I can, things that I can afford, and the things that companies are willing to work with me on. So I appreciate all that. I will leave links for some of the stuff you saw down below if you're on YouTube. You gotta check the first link in the description. It'll take you to my webpage where you can see the actual links to purchase because YouTube doesn't allow us to put those links on uh, their pro, their, uh, pro uh, setup anymore. So, eh, you know, whatever, it's their platform. They can tell me what I can and can't do if I wanna keep using it. 
And I do because I get to put out information and have fun with this stuff. Now, if you do use any of those links, that's almost all of those. Some of them are, some of them aren't, but most of them are gonna be affiliate links, which definitely helps the channel out. I have a subscribe star page too that you can check in the description below, and that's there if you wanna be ultra generous to the channel. Helps me grow, helps me get you guys more information, helps me test stuff out, and hopefully give you guys good information so you can steer uh, yourself towards that right direction. And like I said, again, don't just go by my word or one other person's word. Get as much information as you can, whether it's about your first purchase, the optics, the gear. It can get overwhelming, but really find a couple of good sources out there and kind of vary those sources. Make sure you're just not listening to all military guys because being foreign military myself, I only wanted stuff that was up here and crazy expensive and all that. That's not going to be for most people or their budget. So find some different sources that are kind of in and around there, whether it's competition guys, military guys, uh, law enforcement guys civilian shooters, anything like that, and try to get the best formulated opinion you can off of the information that's out there to make your decisions. You guys, get out there on the range, have some fun, and I will see you guys on the next one.